Oh, hi, hang on one second. Thanks, I just wanted to finish that chapter real fast. Um, good morning and welcome to another edition of Saturday with Stephanie. I am so glad you guys are here today. I wanted to share with you some things that I really love to do um, during this time when we have to practice social distancing, we might not be able to go out as much, we not, might not be able to see our friends as much. Um, it's a little complicated. So I wanted to share with you some of my favorite ways to spend time during this. Um, maybe for you, some of these things will ring true, but today I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about something that I have loved to do pretty much my whole life. Um, my mom loves to tell the story about how I taught myself how to read when she was babysitting a bunch of kids. Um, I think I told you last week that I was never really able to nap when I was younger. Um, and that goes back for a really long time. In fact, that's another story my mom tells is that when my baby sister came home and I was 18 months old, the first week I gave up my morning nap and the second week I gave up my afternoon nap. It's a wonder that she didn't put me up for adoption, to be honest, that she had a newborn and a toddler and the toddler would not sleep. So anyway... When I was about three, maybe four years old, my mom was babysitting some other kids in our house, um, kind of like a mini daycare sort of situation. And there was nap time every day. I think it allowed her to get some stuff done, maybe some cleaning up, maybe some prep for snack time, whatever that might be. But I still did not nap. So she would give me a pile of books and tell me to just stay there and be quiet so I didn't wake up the other kids. And my guess is I probably already knew some words because both of my parents were teachers at the time. Um, they probably had worked with me a lot on reading anyway, and I had probably memorized some of the books from being read them every night. Um, but at some point, I learned to read them for myself during that time. So reading has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Um, you saw me reading earlier. This is my Kindle. Um, most of my reading takes place on that these days. Now, I know some of you out there have some really strong opinions about Kindle versus physical books. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, for me, this works really well because instead of carrying a huge stack of books that would reach all the way to the ceiling and be way too heavy for me to carry around, I can carry them all around in a tiny little weightless, almost weightless package. So that's just kind of how I choose to do things. The other benefit is, even though you can't use the library, I can still use the library because I can borrow books online. Um, so that's just me. I also wanted to introduce you to something, somebody. Last week, I introduced you to Corner. This week, I want to introduce you to Sylvester. Now, Sylvester was my first teddy bear. And the reason his name is Sylvester, which is kind of a funny name to give a teddy bear, but... One of the books that I was reading at the time when I was given him was a book called Sylvester Sleeps In. And it was about a bear that hibernated way past when he was supposed to. So I named my teddy bear Sylvester. Um, I've had kind of a habit of doing that with my toys. They, their names would come from books that I would read or movies that I would watch. But I was always very careful to make sure that I was thoughtful in my process for how I would name them. It was very important to me. Um, maybe it is for you. Maybe um, for you, you have a doll like mine. You know, I told you I had a doll named Corner last week. So obviously when I was really little, I wasn't real careful with the naming. But for a while after that, I was. You see too that I'm sitting in front of a bookcase because we do still have some regular books in our house. Um, in fact, we have even some kid books. Speaking of teddy bears, it's kind of amazing that bear isn't named Corduroy because this was probably my favorite kid's book ever. Um, if you're a kid out there, even grown-ups, you may recognize this one. It's one of my favorite stories. Um, it might be worth picking up, but the name of the book is Corduroy. If you've never heard of it, seriously, definitely give it a read. It's a great one. Um, some of the others that I have back here. Oh. Here we go. Peter Rabbit 
story time collection. You might wonder why we have so many kids books, but part of that is when our nieces and nephews come to visit. That hasn't happened in a while and it probably won't happen for a while. We like to have books for them to read and Peter Rabbit was always one of my favorites. In fact, I have always loved stories about rabbits. Peter Rabbit, the Velveteen Rabbit, um, there was a story about an Easter bunny that I really liked. Rabbit stories have always been some of my favorite stories to read. The other favorite stories that I have to read are stories from the Bible. Now, you might not have a great picture Bible at home. Um, if you're a kid watching this and you don't have a Bible and you would like one, ask your mom and dad. Moms and dads, if you need help picking one out, please let me know because I would be happy to do that. Because you know what? There are lots and lots of great things to read in the Bible. Last week I read a psalm to you and I love the book of Psalms because it's poetry. It's the songs that the people sang. It was their hymn book. But you know what hymns are? You know what songs are? They're basically poems set to music. That's all. That's all that they are. And I enjoy poetry very, very much. Um, so I would recommend all kinds of things like that to you. In fact, I'm going to put the link to a specific poet that I really like following in the description to this video. Um, his website, all the places you can find him, it's called Written to Speak. And he is actually Lutheran and he writes poems and performs them for people. So it's kind of cool. I love knowing that that exists. But anyway, I wanted to share, I have these read aloud Bible story books. Um, we have them at church and we've used them from time to time with kids. Um, there are children's story books or story Bibles um, that have pictures that can be helpful and they've kind of made the language a little easier to understand. Um, for the adults out there, have you ever read the Bible like a continuous story? Um, one of the books I would highly recommend if you've never read it before, it's called the story and it takes the Bible and it's rearranged it a little bit into chronological order. So you can read the story of God's people from beginning to end. Um, cause sometimes we'll say, Oh, I want to read the whole Bible. Well, Genesis is really exciting. You get, um, Adam and Eve, you get Noah, you get Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Exodus. It's really cool. It's all the stuff of Moses and God's people leaving Egypt and crossing the Red Sea. And then Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Now Leviticus can be a little bit interesting at times. It gets into all the details of the law that was given to Moses. Um, and how it's shared with the people, all of God's laws and intricacies. And it can be a little bit interesting. And then you get into the book of Numbers. And this is about where everybody quits reading the Bible from beginning to end. Because the book of Numbers is just that. It's kind of a census book of God's people. Um, I don't know that I've ever read the entire book of Numbers except possibly in my Old Testament class in college, it's just really a tough slog to get through. There's some really beautiful verses in the middle of it, but reading it as a narrative is tough. When you get into Deuteronomy, things get a little more interesting again, and the story picks up again in the book of Joshua. But I find that it's more helpful sometimes to skip around a little bit in the Bible, and that's okay. Um, we do that every week with our worship service. Generally speaking, throughout the church year, we have an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, maybe one of the epistles. Um, and I told you that before, those are the letters after the gospels. And we always have a gospel reading. Now this time of year, because we're in the season of Easter, we don't even have the Old Testament reading. The very first reading we do is from the book of Acts, which is the narrative of how the church exploded all over the world because it started just in Jerusalem with a group of 12 guys. That's it. Started with 12 people and then exploded all over the world until every corner has been told the gospel at some point or another. Um, so some places to read in the Bible that I think are very, very interesting. If you're looking for that narrative storytelling book of Genesis, um, 
the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is fine as a gospel, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke are what we call synoptic gospels. And what that means is they are the ones that tell kind of the narrative story in order of the life of Jesus. Um, so keep that in mind when you're choosing things. The book of Acts is really exciting, though. Um, it's the missionary journeys. It's Peter going into prison and, mis and ministering to the prison guard. It's Paul coming to faith after persecuting Christians. It's kind of fascinating, actually. So I really commend it to you. Um, if you feel like you don't have time to read, I would recommend to you that you look into some sources for maybe audio, um, listening to the Bible. I've done that from time to time. I can't read in the car. It is the greatest heartbreak of my entire life that I cannot read in the car or I get car sick. Been true my whole life. And it's miserable on long road trips. Um, I was on a very long road trip about five, six years ago. Um, it was driving from Texas to Nebraska for my grandmother's funeral. And I was heartbroken and I was sad. And I didn't know what else to do. So I put in my headphones. Um, someone else was driving. And I listened to the entire book of John. And I listened to a lot of Psalms. Um, because the Psalms can be very, very comforting. There are so many different variations, and I'm going to take one of these video times to really dig into the book of Psalms and talk about the different types there are. But again, poetry, and it's awesome, especially to listen to if you have the right audio recordings. There are podcasts out there that record scripture. There are apps, scripture apps, where you can actually download audio to listen to. Um, there are so many resources out there, and I commend the reading of scripture to you because it's so powerful and so beautiful. Um, if you are looking for places to get started, we actually have a weekly email that goes out to people that have signed up for reading the Bible. Um, and I'm going to put the link for the sign up at the bottom of the description also, because I think spending time in scripture is just really, really helpful. Um, sometimes you will happen upon a verse that you just, it just sticks with you. And you find a few days later that that verse is exactly what you needed in the moment to hear and be blessed by God speaking to you into your life. Sometimes it's just that reminder as we're reading through scripture that we're not alone because all of us are reading the same scriptures. Um, for those of you with kids in the audience, um, for those kids that are in the audience, Find a good children's Bible. Um, if you're using an app, maybe look at an easy to read version. Um, that's one of the versions that you can find in those apps. The version of the scriptures that we use um, for church purposes is called the English Standard Version. And I can get into some of those differences on another one of these also. Um, so those two I definitely recommend to you, but there are so many others. One of my favorites to read personally is called the NRSV. It's the New Revised Standard Version. Part of that for me is that I grew up um, in the Lutheran church going to a Lutheran school, and the Bible we used in school was the Revised Standard Version predecessor to the New Revised Standard Version. And we had to memorize a lot of Bible verses back then for school. And so when I read the NRSV, the New Revised Standard, some of the language is very, very similar to the things that I memorized as a kid. And it connects me to scripture in a way that reminds me of all those things from when I was a kid, kind of like this bear does and kind of like this book, um, because scripture is for our whole life long. It's not just for the babies getting baptized. It's not just for those who are on their deathbed. It's not just for the pastors in the pulpit. It's for all of us. God gave us his word. It is how he speaks to us. It is how we learn to know him is through his word. And so I just commend that to you. If you need help figuring out where to start, please give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Um, I just encourage you to find the time, not just to read the books that excite you, um, but to read 
scripture, to read the word of God, to spend time in it, to spend time meditating on what he has in store for you. I thank you so much for being here today. Happy reading and enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you in worship tomorrow. Bye.